Hello and welcome to AF Anime. My name is John and it is the 20th of February, which means that we have a Dragon Ball Super chapter today. This time it's going to be of chapter 81, which is titled Goku's Conflict. And this chapter is going to be a bit action heavy like the last couple. However, we get some dark twists and turns and some interesting twists and turns when it comes to this chapter. So without any further ado, I'll go ahead and get right into the recap. So when it comes to this chapter's first page, it's pretty much a smooth transition to where we left off from the last chapter. And when we get to page two, we get to see something interesting and it looks like gas has picked up the ability to cast spells now I guess that's how it's worded in the chapter but it would seem as if he has some kind of paralysis jutsu that he's attacking Goku and Vegeta with I suppose that's convenient for the storyline considering where this chapter and the next chapter is likely to go but more on that later for now we see that granola is trying to make a sneak attack on the leg by appearing behind him and as he goes for the killing blow which would exact revenge for his race his planet and his mother we see that gas has yet another ability and he apparently he can use telekinesis and teleport objects or people who aren't even remotely within reach of his own body. And then after narrowly being saved by his brother, Elec gets a little bit of dialogue that kind of shows off the fact that he is pretty much evil and has no form of redemption coming whatsoever. So Elec continues to taunt Granola, who's charging up an attack to snipe Elec. But before he can get that attack off, he's interrupted by Gas, who uses a kick to snap both of Granola's wrists and break them. Then after that, he uses two key blasts from both his index and his middle finger to blind Granola as well. And you can actually see the blood coming out of his eyes, so you have to imagine this has got to be pretty damaging. And we also know that the eyes and the sniping fingers are pretty much the go-to attack when it comes to the Cerulean race. And if that wasn't dark enough for you, Alec shoots Granola through the back and even taunts him about the way his mother died as well as he's doing so. So like I said a short while ago, this chapter is starting to get a little bit more of a dark and serious feel to it in comparison to all the other chapters and other fight related chapters since this arc has started. I mean just take a look at this panel here it just has a certain dark and grimy feel to it that we haven't quite seen since we met Granola and the Hater Clan and this whole ordeal began. But more on that after the recap for now we see the constant trope of someone giving Goku energy to save the day and this is of course in the form of Vegeta who's still paralyzed. This conveniently gives Goku enough key to transform into blue and break the spell put on him by gas. So he dashes up to gas, kicks him down to the ground so we can get another page or two of dialogue. So after they both land on the ground, Goku manages to stave his anger and then for some reason asks gas to leave the planet. So Elec cuts the conversation short by stating to Goku that begging for his life won't make any difference. That him and Vegeta actually have to die because they know of the plan. So upon hearing this, gas goes back to using the technique where he materializes weapons and he creates walls with spikes on them to put some pressure on Goku. Now after Goku escapes the two walls that were closing in on him, Gas creates six walls total with relative ease. And then we get a couple pages of Goku dodging and breaking these walls. But after Goku one-ups this attack, the fight goes for a very interesting turn as we see that Gas can use his telekinesis on objects other than just people. He takes notice of a city that's behind him when Goku is thwarting off these walls and then begins to attack Goku using the remnants of this ruined city. And admittedly at first I was thinking to myself, how boring this fight was about to be if it was just gas throwing things at Goku over the entire chapter. But as I said, it takes an interesting turn after Goku is hit by a moving train. Goku then flips on top of the train and engages gas in a nice fight, which I imagine is just going to be amazing once it's animated. But almost smack dab in the middle of this interesting action based chapter, we get a little bit of story push. We see from gas that he's trying to compare Goku to his father, in particular the lack of fire in his eyes and the lack of a fierce resolve. And to boot, we hear from gas that Goku will not defeat him unless he becomes more like his father. That is interesting for a multitude of reasons, but I'll get into that during the discussion portion of this video towards the end. In any case, Gas sends Goku to an underwater setting where they continue the fight, and it almost seems like Gas is about to suffocate Goku before he decides not to. Goku lets a key blast out, and Gas reverses it on Goku. Now, ultimately, the water based panels look amazing, but they don't really serve to change the pace or the standing in the fight whatsoever, so I'll just move on beyond that. So after they emerge from the water, Gas catches Manito in the process of healing Granola. So naturally, as any good villain of Dragon Ball would do, once you spot a Namekian healing people, it is the key indicator that they should be the first to die. And as Gas charges in to kill Manito, Goku charges him, then using instant transmission or instant teleportation to teleport them both to the nearest key signature that is off the planet. And thankfully, it is Jocko. 
So after the two interrupt Jocko from changing a light bulb, Goku engages in a little bit of trash talk talking about how his instant teleportation is better than Gas's, and then we're treated to a little bit of an instant teleportation fight, and it would seem that Goku has the upper hand. So as they're fighting, one of their clashes knocks Jocko on his butt, and Goku, as per usual, decides to take off to a safer place to fight. And he taunts Gas by doing so, saying, can you really follow me wherever I can go? To which Gas responds that he should not be underestimated, and we see him using instant teleportation to follow Goku. Presumably. The chapter ends with Jocko saying that he's just going to pretend he didn't see anything, also ending the chapter on a note that we don't really know if Gas was able to follow Goku or not. So that is going to do it for the chapter recap. Now for the rating, I'm going to give this chapter a 7.5 out of 10. And my reasoning for that is that we don't really go anywhere new when it comes to this chapter. I mean, in terms of location, we do, but as far as the story's progress, we really haven't gone anywhere. And in terms of the hype level, it really wasn't impressive, but I will say that the dialogue was incredibly interesting during this chapter. We're on that in a couple minutes, though. The first thing I want to address when it comes to the chapter discussion is the seemingly endless amount of abilities that Gas and I guess also Granola seem to be pulling out of their back pockets in order to fight Goku and Vegeta. Well, I know that that is supposed to be a side effect of wishing to be the world's strongest, so I guess they're gifts from the Dragon Balls, but ultimately I hope the writers aren't putting themselves in a corner with this idea or this approach. Now, I mentioned this in a review about five or six months ago when I said that the concept of characters using telekinesis was relatively rare. We had Frieza who could use it, and then we also had Chiaotzu who could use it, and now it just seems like it's a bargain sale of people being able to use these once coveted abilities. I mean, we've already had Moro using magic in the last arc, so I would hope that at this point they're done giving Gas new abilities to use. And another irritating aspect of this chapter would be the fact that Goku mentioned stifling his anger for the sake of his ultimate technique. And we don't even see him use Ultra Instinct, or at least that's what I'm assuming he was going to use. So after that, we spend a whole one third of the chapter with him using his blue form, which I'm assuming has to be draining his stamina and shortening the amount of time that he can actually use Ultra Instinct. It should be clear at this point that Gas is the strongest in the universe. Goku is not going to one-up him using his blue form. And I can't imagine any real good reason for Goku not to go straight into Ultra Instinct, unless the writers have something up their sleeves. And that brings me to my next topic, and probably the most important topic of the discussion part of this video, and that's going to be Bardock's mention in this chapter, or at the very least his comparison to Goku by Gas. So if you didn't catch it in your own read-through or in my recap part of the video, it is stated by Gas saying that Goku, unless he gets the undying resolve that his father had, is not going to defeat him. And another mention that we get about Bardock in this chapter from Gas is that he calls Bardock vexing. Now, that is interesting for a couple reasons, one of which is that the actual English definition of the word vexing basically means pesky or irritating, but in some cases a lot of people have used it to mean confusing or baffling. This could be telling for Goku and some more potential character growth or possibly even a new form. I mean I gotta imagine at some point that we will get the final reveal or the full flashback of Bardock versus Gas and how and why Bardock won that fight. But the line from Gas saying that Goku unless he gets his father's resolve will not be capable of defeating Gas as he is. And this is interesting because when it comes to Vegeta and his new form it is all about mindset. So what we could be getting hints at for this chapter is that Goku could be getting a new form of his own that might also be similar to Ultra Ego. And this might seem like a stretch but the reason I come to this conclusion is because we don't really see Goku use the same lines that he did in the past where he says oh I'm not a Saiyan I'm an earthly nor has he shared the same disinterest about the Saiyan race when it comes to the mention of his father in these past couple chapters I mean I'm gonna be honest here I don't really know where this is going but I will say that when it comes to Toyotaro and Akira Toriyama they have the pieces together right here for some really interesting paths for Goku to take in terms of powering up or learning about his past or both so hopefully soon we will get the conclusion of the Bardock fight with Gas and maybe even some character progression with Goku I mean, I mean, I can't imagine that they would bring Bardock into the story and have him act the way he did throughout this arc and not have it have some kind of lasting effect on the story or maybe even Goku's character progression. But more on that in another video. I guess now we can talk about the feel or the tone of this chapter, which I think is getting better. Now, when it comes to these fights, it just seems like it's more or less people testing their abilities or putting their toe in the water in terms of challenging other fighters. But this chapter's content makes me feel like this arc is about to get a good deal darker or at least a lot more serious in tone. I mean, if you, this panel here is just savage. To think that this would happen in Dragon Ball where somebody gets blown
blinded with key blast and gets shot through the back. These are things we've kind of seen before, but not really to this extent and not this close together within a chapter's contents. So when it comes to Gas, he doesn't quite feel like the big bad villain, even though he looks the part. Alec, however, seems to be stepping up in his dark mentality or his a-hole-ish attitude, and I think that that's appropriate. I mean, we still don't know what his extra errand was, but we'd have to assume that he completed it before joining the battle scene. Now, we also have to take into consideration that he didn't actually engage Granola in a fight. He did see him charging toward him, but he allowed Gas to do all the work. So in a previous review, I postulated a theory that it's possible that he's going to use the Dragon Balls to either become the strongest warrior himself or to make himself a viable fighting opponent to the Z warriors and Granola. Heck, I mean, it's possible that he might have held on to the Dragon Radar while his siblings attended to the fight. Also, unless there is a plot hole of the sky not growing dark while he made a wish, What's stopping Vegeta or Granola from getting up and killing the remainder of the siblings? I mean, as far as we know, Gas is the only one who can fight. So ultimately, there is a lot to think about in regards to this chapter and how it ended, but that's going to do it for my review and my discussion on Dragon Ball Super Chapter 81. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. If you have any thoughts or ideas or anything I miss about this chapter, leave it in the comments section down below. Also, like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and want to see more like it. I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you guys very much much for tuning in. My name is John from AF Anime and I'll catch you guys in the next video.